Hello, hello. Welcome back to Daily Devotions. Today we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Um, let's go ahead. I want to do a little bit of an overview because it kind of changes the tone from what we've been reading. If you read straight through 2 Corinthians, you'll notice like there's a change in tone beginning in chapter 10. Some theologians believe that the first nine chapters were addressed to the silent majority of struggling to follow Paul's leadership, and the last three, 10, or 10 through 13, pertain more to the vocal minority still heavily influenced by the false teachers in the church. The shift in tone was in light of the growing influence of false teachers in Corinth. Paul uses blunt and forceful language, employed a warfare analogy, and then conducted a short course about how to recognize a man of God. His powerful words can help us become stronger and better Christians today. Here we go. Verse one. Now, I, Paul, myself am pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent and bold towards you. So Paul is actually answering the accusation um, where he tells it, it, he was being accused of being bold in his letters. Yet whenever he got close, he wouldn't even raise his voice. He tells them he doesn't want to carry out hard plans whenever he's around them. But I beg you that when I am present, that I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked in according to our flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience where your obedience is fulfilled. Weapons of our warfare. Our warfare is against spiritual for forces of wickedness. Therefore, carnal weapons such as human talent and wealth and organize organizing ability and eloquence and charisma and propaganda are in themselves inadequate to pull down strongholds. Thus, only weapon that works are the ones that God gives us, things like the gospel and faith and hope and the word of God and preserving prayer. Today, the church is tempted to use human wisdom but we must have an uncompromising commitment to the word of God and bring into captivity every thought that would come against his word. He would go on to say, do you think of things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is of Christ, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. For even if if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for edification and not for your destruction, I shall not be ashamed lest I see to terrify you by letters. For his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily appearance is weak and his speech is contemptible. Let such a person consider this, that what we are in words by letters when we are absent, such we will also be indeed when we are present. See, the false accusers had accused Paul of being an abusive leader, trying to intimidate people in his letters. Paul's goal was to make them repent. They said his way letters were weighty and strong, but his appearance was weak. Since they could not speak against the truth in God's word, they began to attack his personal appearance. For we dare, for we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves uh, with those who commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, a sphere which especially includes you. For we are not overextending ourselves, though our authority do not extend to you. For it was to you that we came in the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things beyond measure, that is, in another man's labor, but having hope that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's sphere of accomplishment. But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord, for not he who commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commends. It's the mark of Paul's humility that he refused to compare himself with others or engage in self-promotion. His only personal concern was that of what the Lord thought of him. In contrast to the proud, arrogant, boastful fear, false uh, uh, apostles, Paul refused to say anything about his ministry that was not true or God-given and was content to stay within the boundary of the ministry that God had given him. That was the Gentiles. Thus, contrary to the claims of the false apostles, Paul's and Paul's sphere of ministry included Corinth. And what Paul was saying was, I know how to stay in my lane, and you guys are in my lane. Big three ideas. Number one, spiritual warfare is one in prayer, not charisma. Number two, when people can't contradict the word, 
They attack the attacks get personal. Don't give in to that. Don't go personal. Stand on the word of God. And number three, know your God given lane and simply stay in it. Uh, that is um, that's the that's that's the daily devotions for today. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, God bless you. Have a great day.